Hey there Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about the difference between wet and dry exhaust in a boat and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Alright, let's start by explaining what a wet exhaust is and what a dry exhaust is. Excuse my dodgy simplified diagrams, but the idea is you have your engine, this is a wet exhaust, comes out of your exhaust manifold here into your exhaust. Now this section of the exhaust is actually dry. So all a wet exhaust is, is where water is injected into the exhaust pipe to mix with the exhaust gases. That's what a wet exhaust is fundamentally. So here where it's dry, it'll be wrapped in some sort of heat shield because it'll get very hot, the dry section. One of the big advantages of wet exhaust is it keeps the pipe and the exhaust gases cooler. Water gets injected here, the exhaust comes this way. So during this portion of the pipe, you've essentially got, well, to be honest with you, mostly steam because the water comes in, the exhaust gases are so hot, it turns to steam. And this is a big part of what actually silences the exhaust and makes it quieter. So then water, some, some liquid water, some steam and some exhaust come down here. What happens after this varies from boat to boat, but in my trawler what's installed is uh, a lift muffler and this essentially just fills with water. I believe this comes down below the water line, comes in here and then eventually comes up and out. And you'll see water and exhaust coming out of here. Now there's a few things you really need to get right with a wet exhaust. Probably the most critical is that you don't have water flowing backwards into the exhaust manifold through some open exhaust valves and into your cylinder bores. The other is that the boat itself never actually floods, that you don't back flood through the exhaust into the boat and sink it. So the main way this is achieved is gravity, making sure the water flows downhill, and when you don't want water to flow, you rise up at least about 12 inches above a certain point, you know, whether it's the water line, the outlet itself, whatever, to give yourself this return that's a bit of a buffer against water flowing backwards. Dry exhaust is much, much more like the exhaust in a, in a car or a truck. It doesn't have any water going into the exhaust at all, which means the entire length of the exhaust is wrapped in some sort of heat shield. You'll generally either have a straight through pipe, if it's a real agricultural trawler, that kind of boat, or you'll have a muffler if you're trying to make the dry exhaust quieter. The complexities with a dry exhaust are managing the heat and then because this gets quite hot you have a lot of thermal expansion so where pipes go through there can't be hard fittings it has to be able to slip through a ring that supports it and you need these sort of spiral expansion joints in places you need that because of the vibration of the motor as well so you'll have that with a wet and a dry once the exhaust here is got has got water in it you can actually just use things like rubber hosing which we'll see on my boat in a little bit because the exhaust is cool enough not to melt the rubber, whereas you need to be all metal with a dry exhaust. There's a few fundamental pros and cons with these two designs, but even then, don't take them as gospel because, for example, one of the pros of a wet exhaust is listed commonly as more internal space because you don't have a dry stack coming up through the accommodation, as you'll see in my friend Dave Howell's trawler later in the video. But for me, moving to a dry exhaust is actually all about gaining more internal space. So, you know, it really does depend whether it's a pro for you or a con or how it's laid out. All right, we'll quickly go through what's the classic list of pros and cons, and then we'll start looking at some real boats. Here are some commonly listed pros and cons that you'll find on the web just about everywhere you look. And with a wet exhaust, the pros they say are less heat issues, easy to design, more interior space. So, less heat issues, yes, absolutely. Easy to design, yeah, look, I think that's probably true, although I think it's not as great a difference. And the other thing is, you know, easier to design and the con, you know, you get this sort of converse, um, you know, con for the dry exhaust that is complex to design. But then once that's done, it's, it's done, you know, so that's something you, you live with for a small period of time. So I don't think that's as important. Then, uh, you know, they say more interior space. So for me, the exact opposite is true, and I'll show you why when we get out there. Then they're saying, look, you've got pump failure, and then obviously the, the seawater strainer that can clog up as well. Now, that's only really true 
if you have a keel cool boat. So with a dry exhaust, you can have a keel cool boat and actually have no raw water coming into the boat at all. The idea with keel cooling is that you have a fresh water system inside your engine, then you have a fresh water pump, very similar to a car. And then instead of having it come out with your top and bottom radiator hoses in a car, it comes out under the boat and then you have some piping and the sea below the boat, the water below the boat actually acts as the radiator. In that case, you've only got your fresh water pump inside the engine for the boat. You don't then have a heat exchanger like I have on my boat where salt water is pumped through the heat exchanger, which acts as you know the radiator. So if you have a dry exhaust and kill cooling, you don't need a salt water pump at all. So that's, that's definitely an advantage in that setup. Now, what wasn't listed on this website that's commonly talked about is pro for wet is quiet and a pro for dry is, uh, sorry, a con for dry is noisy. EY? Why? I don't know, sorry. Anyway, so I, um, this was my biggest concern because I'm going to be doing some long passages and I don't want to live with racket for eight hours solid or whatever. But as we'll see, the dry exhaust I see is actually quite quiet. So I can kind of see why it's not listed here. They talk about fumes. If you have a following sea or a following wind on a wet exhaust boat, the exhaust is released low down at the transom so it can blow back in the cabin. Whereas with the uh, dry exhaust, the stack comes right up on the roof. So even if you've got a, a following sea, the, the wind will sort of blow it away from the people in the boat. There is also an argument that the wet exhaust takes more of the particles out of the air and has it into the water, which sort of keeps that fumes down. So, you know, a little bit 50-50. Hopefully that gives you an idea theoretically about what is the difference between a wet and dry exhaust. Now let's head out on the water and take a look at an example of both in the real world. Oh, and last video people were hassling me about how messy my workshop is, so I've decided to uh, acquiesce and have a bit of a clean up. All right, let's go. You can actually see the river today. Oh, and to continue our uh, day in the life theme briefly, we've got some new chickens. You can see I'm just as bad at uh, weeding as I am at uh, every other bit of cleaning, so I'm glad we got these guys. All right, let's go. We're gonna head out in the Chief now. The Chief is a boat you saw really briefly in one of the early videos on the trawler. Rick, the owner, was the one who pulled up next to the trawler and said, uh, if you're trying to fix the stalling problem, don't mess with the governor, just to jump, just the throttle, you know, because if you don't know what you're doing, you're only gonna make things worse. Anyway, it has a true wet exhaust, so we'll go and check that out. Where's the engine, Rick? It's too small, I can't see it. Tried the kill switch. What? Tried the kill. Oh, you got the same switch I've got. Yes. That little red button thing. <laughs> so it is that leaking? Is. Oh, is it stern gland or? Surely. Yes, the stern Can't gland be. is leaking a bit. I can see the pump twitching, so it's obviously doing something. Yeah. Why don't you the spark? That's good. Yeah, yeah. Why does everyone on Danger Island have the same switch? Because it's Danger Island. That's it. What do you reckon this engine weighs, Rick? Uh, double yours. Yeah, so it's got to be like a ton yeah, and a half. Pretty heavy. Your heat exchanger is bigger than my outboard. Oh yeah, but I'm a serious navy thing. <laughs> you know, everywhere we've got to fix, if you can see it. Yeah. Oh, there is an exhaust leak. Yeah, there's definitely an exhaust leak down here. Yeah. Crank it again. Straight down to get four revs. Yeah. Yeah, because if we can fix the leaks, we'll get Definitely to the new Definitely an exhaust leak that side, yeah. Um, if you know someone who can overhaul that I'll take the turbos off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yep. thing will do 20, 30 knots. Oh, yeah. yeah. $20 of fuel that went out the back. I 
reckon it's perfect, Rick. Don't worry, mate. It's perfect. Yeah, you never know. Almost back again. So this is a eight-cylinder Detroit diesel, and okay, you know, it's not whisper quiet like a car, but the whole time we've been able to talk normally on the back deck right near the exhaust. So in some ways it's a pretty good advertisement for the, the noise attenuation of a wet exhaust. This boat was lifted out and put on the deck of a ship. It's essentially a tender, just a very big one. Okay, well it's got the here. coolest looking controls. Right. And this is the outlet for the water. No, so that's the in, uh, yeah, that's the outlet. Outlet for the, the water. Raw water cooling. So raw water into yeah, each into exhaust. The rubber things, and then that and goes then, straight out the back, and that thing goes to the prop shaft. Yeah, so that cools the stern gland. Yeah, that cools the stern gland. Yeah. Well, you made all of that. I did. Yes. Yeah. I remember. The big risk with wet exhaust, the thing you need to design away from you know being a problem, is that you don't want water flowing back into your turbos in this case, or back down into your exhaust manifold and therefore into pistons because you know you're going to have some exhaust valves open. So because the turbos are really high up, this is where the water is injected, any water in the system just flows back. So the, the exhaust is a dry exhaust from the you know, from the water injection point towards the motor. You do have uh, fresh water cooling, like coolant, like in a car running through the manifold as a way of cooling the manifold itself, but that never actually enters the exhaust gases. It's kept inside a sleeve in the, in the um, you know, water jacket inside the exhaust manifold. So probably the way that wet exhaust designs vary the most is the way in which they stop water flowing back into the motor. You know, sometimes you have a riser exhaust, sometimes you just have a, a section where you have the exhaust and it simply just comes up and back down to make a loop that stops the water flowing backwards. But between the engine stopping and the water just flowing backwards, failing to start, so you're cranking it for a long time, water's being pumped into it but the motor's not running, the exhaust gases aren't pushing, or you've got a following C, whatever it is, the most complicated part of the design is just keeping that water out of the engine. All right, now we've seen a bit of a classic uh, wet exhaust in the Chief. We'll go and check out Cavalier, which is my mate Dave Howell's trawler, uh, timber trawler this time, and have a look at its dry exhaust. I like the way you've changed the name of your boat to Lear. Tell me about dry exhaust. Okay then, I wanted to talk about this boat in what what I've got here. You've okay. used your time up now. Uh, um, okay. No, so you've got you've it's always been dry exhaust from the day it was born. So we've both we've got uh, wet exhaust mm -hmm. on the gen set. Yep. And we've got a dry exhaust on the on the main motor. Okay, cool. Now originally, uh, at some stage in the configuration. We had two dry exhausts. Oh, for the gen set as well. We had the gen set running. Uh, there's, if you look at the funnel on the top of the boat, which yeah. we get to, yeah, yeah. you'll notice I've got a, an auxiliary pipe up there. Yep. I guess also your generator's running like in the evenings and things, so the quieter the better. Correct, and that's why now, it, be, being a, when we bought it was pretty agricultural. Yep. Um, it's extremely noisy, and now I've made a soundproof box up. Right, around the generator. Around the generator, of. and that's, look, you had to wear earmuffs down there. Uh, the motor's starting to, um, it's it, it's sucking air, it needs more air, so right, I've got to okay. cut a hole in the side. Oh, right, and it's actually running drawing, it's running air. Exactly, box. so it's yeah. it's actually um, hunting, I suppose. Oh, really? Word. So okay, so it's starving for it's air. It's starving for air, so yeah, okay. what I'll do now is, um, I'm under, I've got the, I've got the, um, air filter here which I'm going to duck through the side of the soundproof oh, which is that's cool. yeah that there's actually um that's mighty car mods yeah do you ever feel that your uh the main motor dry exhaust is too loud underway no 
Cool. Not now, because what I've done is again, it's it's uh, it was it's got a false. It's got like a. It's got a baffle. Right underneath the floor, so to speak. Right, so, so that's more direct engine noise than. Yes, but you're going to get it because it is. It's a big V8 two stroke. Yeah. It is noisy, but I did some research and came up with this. It's probably about a quarter of an inch thick um, uh, soundproofing. Yeah. Which is a really hard mat. Now, what I've done is when we did the Renault on the boat, we put this all over the floor. Yep. and then laid the carpet on top. So it's not oh, the spongy in the cabin, as well. In the cabin okay. as well, right? So that is really, really helpful. So it is quite firm. It's, it's very firm okay. to walk under. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah so right. I've now got this, like it's a blanket and it's called, um, they use it, um, the blanket that I've got now, because this, this um, soundproofing's quite expensive. We start yeah, going right. to a boat supplier and organising panels at, you know, $80 yeah. a panel. I mean, yeah. I, I thought, geez, this is going to be cost of fortune. This is going to be an expensive little episode, but what I was able to do with a bit of research is I found this um, blanket, which is about three metres by, I don't know, it's probably about 1.8, mm -hmm. and um, it works extremely well. Okay. And it's it's $125. Yeah, nice. So, and it's and it's reasonably firm, it's silver back, so you can put the foil to the motor. Yeah, right, right. yeah. Um, Stick it on. Exactly. And it's contact spray, adhesive. Contact adhesive. Yeah, right. And, um, so do you know what that's called? Do you find out? I can find it. Put a link in the description. Yeah. All right, so let's have a look. Let's start on top. Yep. And then uh, mm. we'll go and have a look down below. No problems. Nice stack, Howley. <laughs> uh, so this is your old generator. Right, okay, one. then. So when you look at the configuration the boat was built in, it was built with two dry stacks. Yep. Yep. Right. And then we undo this here, and then you get the real. It's got a little door on the side. Yeah, it's nicely made. Yeah. Someone's going to a lot of trouble. Needs the uh, <laughs> needs the stripes to show where you see your uh, water line should be. <laughs> I never want to see the water line this too. No, fair enough. So there you have it. All right, so the flexible tube in there. Now, what I'm using that dry stack for now is that there's the uh, stink tube for the... Uh, yeah. For the, oh, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So I've wired that in. So that's how... Oh, okay. So that's now your toilet one. That's my toilet now running out Makes here. sense. Six stainer. Yeah, yeah, whole thing's stainless. Nice. Yep. It's really good. And then you've got a... A solid blanket on it rather than wrapping, which I like. I like those blankets. Yep. And now this is pretty good. I mean, when, when we're running, yep. when you're up here, I mean, it's a decent sized muffler on it. Yes, it is. And there we go. South Australia. It certainly does. Um, yeah. South Australia diesel. I might give him a call. It certainly does. Um, you know, it's, it's reasonably quite underway. Yeah, cool. Well, you've been on it. You, I have, yeah, you, you yeah. Had a discussion out in the back deck. Yeah, yeah, and we sat in the wheelhouse. And yeah, look, it's, yep. um, you've got the windows open. It's it's really it's really lovely. Yep. But you, you, we drive, we spend a lot of time just up the river here. Yep. And uh, you drive up, you switch off. The radiant heat from the motor, Yep. unbelievable. Yeah, That's right. In here somewhere or behind yeah, the telly? Stack, stack comes in here. In this, um, the stack is in here. Oh, is it? Yep. Right, so it's right in behind this wall here. Okay, cool. So, what we're going to do now is we'll give this a run. Um, no. no. Now, here's how quite that is now. It's really quiet, isn't it? Oh, before, when, when, when it was raining, we've got a bit of a. I think that's a, that's a point on the front. Yeah, yeah, just a bit of the chirping noise. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming downstairs. Your engine's in the cabin, when mine's actually outside the cabin. Yeah. 
Right. So you've got insulation under the floor here? Under the floor here. And on the yeah. deck of the... Uh, so now, we'll fire up the boost. Fire up the boost. Say the generators still, yeah, you can still hear it over the engine, so yeah. it's hardly, and that's with the insulation, yeah. And as I said, there's I'm, I'm pretty sure there is still some vibration issues in the box, yeah, okay. But that, that there is, the yeah, air good. Well, you're not even raising your voice on the side of stuff, I mean, obviously, you're at idle, but it's still, yeah, and that's a 12 litre Detroit diesel, yeah, <laughs> that's nice, it's pretty, you know, that's that's the oh, completely, yeah. That's not bad at all. Let's go upstairs. Yeah. I think maybe what I'm used to is people going, oh, if you just have a straight through exhaust. Look, it's a muffler. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, out here it's pretty good. That's amazing. That's really quiet. That's amazing. Yeah, no, that's... It's a really a good muffler good muffler like that. The thing that people are saying about the mufflers is that Detroit diesels don't like a lot of back pressure. Yep. So trying to find a balance between muffling the noise and not suffocating the motor. This is never suffocated. Yeah. <laughs> so Interesting. Very good. So, well, that's encouraged me. No, it's really, uh, mm. really good. Thank you, David. Okay, now we've seen a classic example of a wet exhaust and a dry exhaust. Let's go back to my trawler and see what we've got there. So this is the exhaust manifold for the Detroit Diesel 451, and it's roughly in position where it does hang. Then the wet exhaust goes off around here. But the boat used to have a dry exhaust, so it's already got the slip sleeve and all the sort of cool stuff you need to do it right. Then the pipe was here and then the stack was here. So this is how much of the dry exhaust system the boat actually still has in place. And it's a very, very short distance from the outlet on the exhaust manifold to, let's jump in, to what was here, a flex tube for the start of the dry stack going straight up. So it's a bit sunny, a bit of glare. Let's see if we can get out of the sun. So here, this is the uh, flex tube that's just been cut as it goes up through the deck there. And then here, right here, come back a bit. Sorry, I'm on the phone again at the moment, but just there's the stack and then here's the exhaust. So it's all really close. And then this is the wet exhaust that goes off. Uh, makes sense being in the engine room now, seeing why it's so close to the center. It'd be nice if it ran around the edge, but of course you've got your fuel tank in the way. Then it goes through the bulkhead, pretty close to the fuel tank actually. And this is the point where the water is injected on this exhaust. So it's all heat shielded until the water is injected, then it's fine after that. The cooling water comes in through here and then goes straight out through there. This pump here pumped water into the exhaust. It's worth saying at this stage that the way this boat is set up is actually quite unusual and it's a product of having been converted from a dry exhaust to a wet exhaust. The way it's set up now, the raw water pump that goes through the heat exchanger to cool the motor can actually fail. And if you start the boat up, go to the back of the boat, you can see the exhaust start and see water coming out the exhaust, think everything's alright, but it's actually not. All you're seeing is the water coming from that one pump that does nothing other than cool the exhaust. In some ways it's no worse than it was when it had a dry exhaust because there was just no cooling water coming out the exhaust to, to see at all but it's just something to be aware of that you can't take water coming out the exhaust as gospel that there's water going through the heat exchanger. So although one of the uh, you know stated uh, advantages to wet exhaust is more internal space because they don't generally consider area below deck like this internal space you know it's just considered a sort of machinery space but in this case I really need to use it now if I went straight up the exhaust would come up here and it means that I can get rid of this whole pipe 
which gives me access to the port side of the motors to do maintenance, get to the seacox, all that sort of thing. So getting rid of that pipe is a huge advantage to me from a space point of view. Once you come through the bulkhead here into Lazaret, you've got more piping. Once again, as I was saying earlier, you can have this soft tubing because the exhaust is all cooled by the water, so there's no real heat issues now. And then you've got this lift muffler and then the pipe runs downhill towards the transom. So that's a lot of space taken up with this wet exhaust as well. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this video gave you some ideas about the differences between wet and dry exhaust and some of the pros and cons. I'm erring on the side of going back to a dry exhaust. I feel slightly weird about the idea that the boat was dry. Somebody, for whatever reason, has gone to a whole lot of effort to convert it to wet, and then I'm thinking of putting it back which makes you think I might go, hmm, that's why they converted it. So my plan at this stage is to go back to dry, live with it for a while, then remove the infrastructure for the wet exhaust once I'm happy with it. The big challenge for me with the Detroit Diesel 471 is finding a muffler that'll make the motor quiet, but not stifle the sort of scavenging mechanism of the two-stroke motor. So that's something where I'm gonna need to find uh, a bit of an expert in exhaust for this motor in order to select the right hardware. Anyway, I'll look into that over the coming week when I'm also going to be working on servicing the 471. So I'll catch you then. See ya.